Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner, available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I'm going to discuss virtual inheritance, and this is something that I've, you know, tweeted about in the past before, and it's something that you really just don't see a lot of people use, and I'll explain what it is and why it's rare that you would need it. Like most things in C++ or in any other language, the best way to explain it is to give a demonstration. Now, in this episode, I'm using uh, Compiler Explorer, as I often do, but I've also kind of have my own little Compiler Explorer IDE set up here. So this is at compilerexplorer.com or godbolt.org if you're not familiar with this website. And over here on the upper right, I've got the disassembly output. In the middle right, I've got the compiler output. And in the bottom right, I've got the program execution output. And then on the left, the program that I'm currently executing and editing. So as I type, Compiler Explorer is going to compile and run this program, just in case you aren't familiar with this. So let's go ahead and make some examples. So C++ supports multiple inheritance, or inheritance will also, more to the point. So if I say that this derived thing is derived from base, that's how I do this, colon, base. And if I wanted to do multiple inheritance and I wanted to say it's derived from base twice, that's impossible because it's a duplicate class. There's no way to disambiguate which version that we mean. So let's go ahead and make an intermediate one. So now I've got my derived class that inherits from both the intermediate one and intermediate two. Now I'm going to go ahead and provide some member variables here. Now if I want to create an object of this particular derived type here, that's easy enough. Now if I want to access these values, if I want to access i from intermediate one or i from intermediate two, then I'm going to get different values. And let me demonstrate. This I can't to do because it's going to be ambiguous which version I mean. Did I mean the one from intermediate one or did I mean the one from intermediate two? So it is actually possible to do this. I can use this to explicitly say I want the value from intermediate one and there I'm going to see one has been returned from my program, or if I want the value from intermediate two, then I will see that two has been returned from my program. Now, what happens if I wanna access this base value thing right here? So if I wanna do this, This is, not surprisingly, another ambiguous request for value because it doesn't know which way do I want to go. Do I want to go up intermediate one or do I want to go intermediate two? Now, for those of you coming from languages that don't allow multiple inheritance like Java, this entire situation is going to seem a little ridiculous. And for those of you coming from C++ or from other languages, you might think, oh, well, what's the big deal? Obviously, I mean this one. I mean the one from base. C, base, base. Now, the problem is, is that we actually have two different bases at the moment. I have the way to access them through two different ways here. Let's say I increment the one that I can access via intermediate one, and I decrement the one that I can access via intermediate two. Now, if I return this one, the first value, I'm gonna get 43, that was incremented. And if I return the second value, then I'm going to get 41 because I decremented it. So we actually have two different instances of this base class here.
So this is what I'm actually seeing at the moment. I've got two instances of the base class, one each of the intermediate one and two, and one instance of the derived. So this is where virtual inheritance comes in. If I make these virtual base classes, now very clear to keep in mind that this has absolutely nothing to do with virtual functions. I'm talking about virtual inheritance. And now I incremented one and I decremented the other and I return this one, I get 42. Why? Because I went up to 43 and then back down to 42 again. And if I access it via the first element, then I'm going to also get 42. I have now merged these two base classes into one. And you can see here that I no longer get this ambiguous value when I try to access it via d dot base value. So I've taken the rather unfortunate situation that I had before, and I've created this. I now have diamond inheritance. And uh, this is what we probably expected to happen in the first case, but didn't until we added the virtual keyword here. And this can get a little bit messy. If I have many different things inherited, Now you'll note that I just had to remove dash W error here because I want to prove a point. Now, fortunately, our modern tools will give us a very good warning here saying that we've got weird inaccessible base things going on due to ambiguities. But I have created the situation now where I am incrementing via one, decrementing via two, and then adding 10 to three. So because of the virtual relationship here between two and three, they're sharing the same base class and one has its own branch entirely. And we can look at that here. So if I return one, then I'm expecting 43 to be returned. And it is. And if I return the value from two, then I'm expecting 41 plus 10, 51 to be returned. And it is. And if I return the value from three, then I'm expecting the same thing again because this is shared. So the situation now what we have created looks something like this. So why would you want to do this? You probably wouldn't. In fact, the compiler gives us a warning when we created the situation now. But that is a, a definite possibility with how virtual inheritance works. So the point of virtual inheritance in C++ is to merge our base classes when we have multiple instances of the same base class or the same class in our inheritance hierarchy, instead of creating the situation where we've got multiple instances of the same type in our inheritance hierarchy. So if you find yourself doing this kind of thing, you really need to be careful with it. It does exist in the C++ standard in IO streams, and I have only professionally used this feature maybe once or twice, and it has been quite a while. It is the kind of situation that can easily lead to difficult to follow code and things that you should be aware of and careful with when you are doing this kind of thing in C++. So thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new.